and welcome back to Funeral KRT, or as it was originally known, Two Ghouls, a Goblin, and a Podcast. I'm Tyler Howard. I'm Kitchard Riculo. Hello there, I'm Randy Reynolds, here to sell you a crappy mobile plan that you can afford at least. I was in Deadpool. You love Deadpool. Look at this cute little fox. Mint Mobile, you can afford it. <laughs> hey, look, it's Rick Moranis. Remember him? Yeah, he's in our commercials, guys. And also, I was on an episode of the scariest show of all, Crash and Bernstein. Oh, at least none of you guys were in Son of the Mask. So. Ah! That's even scarier. Ha! Ryan Reynolds wins again. <laughs> Brought to you by Mint Mobile. <laughs> Deadpool 3 is going to announce Hugh Jackman, but when are they going to announce Trailer Howard and Richard Riculo returning? God, yes. I mean, here's the thing. With all the cameos going on in Deadpool, I'm surprised that Ryan Reynolds hasn't reached out to the cast of this show. I know, right? So we're talking about the usually forgotten ABC show, Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place, or Two Guys and a Girl, as it's usually known. So what is everyone's relationship with this show? Mostly through mitosis because of you introducing it to us, so I've been learning a lot about it the past couple of months, and I'm like... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> it's an interesting show because it's kind of surprising it's forgotten because it invented a lot of careers. Holy crap. Yeah, the cast in the show is insane. Like, revisiting it, I was like, holy shit, he was on this. Holy shit, she was on this. <laughs> Holy shit, everyone was on this. It's like step by step, but the late 90s. Exactly. Plus, this show not only kickstarted the career of Ryan Reynolds, it also kickstarted the career of Trailer Howard, Richard Riculo, Suzanne Cryer, and Nathan Fillion, and among other guest stars. Holy crap. Hang on a minute. What's step by step again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's two guys a girl at a pizza place again? Uh... Hey, look over there. <laughs> also, Muppets Tonight ended just very shy of when Two Guys, A Girl, and a Pizza Place premiered. We could have gotten a Ryan Reynolds or Trailer Howard episode of Muppets Tonight, and I am so mad we didn't. God damn, we were close. And this, this is why we need a Disney Plus reboot of The Muppet Show so bad, because I know for a fact, 100%, should that ever happen, that Ryan Reynolds will be a guest star. Oh, it will 100%. Yes. <laughs> Maybe then they'll do the two guys, a girl in a pizza place parody. <laughs> two frogs, a uh, pig, and a pizza rizzo? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, two frogs, a pig, and a pizza rizzo. Why not? Yeah. And also, we totally need Animal as Deadpool. Oh, God, mm. yeah. Explosion! <laughs> Just call me Angel of the morning, Angel! <laughs> so my relationship with the show is pretty interesting in that I actually did catch the original run of this show here and there because this was one of the shows me and my dad gravitated to, and in retrospect, so much of this show flew over my head. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like this and the Drew Carey show were the two shows that we always watched together. And I'm surprised that he let me watch those two as much as he did because, good lord, the adult humor on these shows was just so out there. Oh my god, I watched Seinfeld so often with my dad as a kid, and I just was amazed how many jokes I'd learn were actually probably not the best to repeat on the school ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I've been rewatching a lot of Drew Carey's show lately, and yes. that show has simultaneously aged well in its comedy, but also aged very poorly. Yeah. I just know something. What? So far, every sitcom we've talked about has been an ABC sitcom. Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, technically it has, or at least owned by Disney, so. So why aren't we recording this on a Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this aired on a Friday night. Thanks, Satan, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks, TGI, Satan, it's yeah. Saturday. <laughs> I do have to go back into my history again real quick. Oh yeah, no problem. And then semi-recently, I was listening to an episode of Podcast The Ride where one of the hosts, Scott, mentioned that he associated a specific time in ABC advertising history with reruns of this show, and he was not a fan. <laughs> and then I remembered, hey, I did 
grow up on that show, and I am watching Monk, which also has Trailer Howard in it. Maybe I'll give this a shot. And look where we are today. <laughs> we have a lot to say about this show. And I will say, based on this episode and the out of context stuff I've seen, I've never seen a show that basically preempted It's Always Sunny in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, something that me and Marissa talked about a while back was that this show, Seinfeld and the Drew Carey show, are kind of the big three in terms of proto Always Sunny shows. And again, I think the reason why I love this show so much is just the cast has like really excellent chemistry. They do. They all work really great together, and you can see how a lot of their early talents really shine through. Not jumping into the episode yet, but, like, it's really no wonder that Ryan Reynolds became the star that he did. Yes. Although I remember that for a while he was struggling a bit because he was mostly getting a lot of these really obscure comedies. It was, like, way before he got Deadpool, though thankfully long before X-Men Origins Wolverine's miserable depiction of Deadpool. Yeah, oh god, that's right. Uh, he was also doing the Van Wilder movies like after the show yeah, in between right. this and the X-Men movie that he was in that we don't talk about. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have not seen Free Guy, so if I don't reference it, oops. <laughs> oh, man. It's okay. I don't think anybody really saw Free Guy, but you know what everybody did see? Deadpool. Both yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. God, I want to go back to the day I saw those in theaters. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I said, the cast of this show is really good. For me, I think the breakout stars of the show would be Richard Ruccolo and Trailer Howard, just because they get a lot of the good lines and comedic timing and everything, and low-key trailer's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh. right to say that. Also, Ryan Reynolds is, well, he's always been hot, but... Ryan Reynolds has aged very well, I gotta say. Yes, Dilf. <laughs> Hot and funny? I am tempted to say the most inappropriate thing ever. Oh my god. Yeah, go ahead. Ryan Reynolds, if you're listening, my DMs and my legs are wide open. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's fine. Oh, god. oh man. Also, I think I mentioned this on How Did This Not Get Made, but Ryan Reynolds was actually in the running to play Tim Avery in Son of the Mask. That- so had that happened, Son of the Mask technically would have been a two guys and a girl reunion movie. That's right. It would have been a Berg X Sharon movie and Ryan Reynolds actually would have pulled off the mask. He would have, but at the same time, he wouldn't get the shine because the mask does jack shit in a movie based off of the fucking mask. Yep. <laughs> and I guess another reason why I respect Trailer Howard as an actress is... Good lord, she had to act alongside Jamie Kennedy and pretend to be in love with him. Good god, that poor woman. Sometimes, you really have to give an actor a ton of credit for trying to make the best out of pure dog shit. That is a talent in and of itself that is worthy of all my respect. Yes. It says a lot that after Son of the Mask, she did Monk, and after the few years of Monk, she just quit acting entirely just because she knew her career was made right then and there, just by all the fucking guest stars on that show, such as Alfred Molina. Yes! <laughs> Which, <laughs> funny enough, she was on a sitcom with him. A very short-lived one. Yeah, Bram and Alice. That sure was a show, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm debating whether I like it more than Ladies Man. Oh, God, yeah. So we almost did an episode on Ladies Man just to balance the simpery out so I could have this and Kit could have Ladies Man, but it didn't work out for a multitude of reasons. Rest in peace, Betty White, by the way. You can kind of tell that the show was living a bit in Friends shadows, because it has a bit of a similar sense of humor, except this show seems to remember that its characters are not good people, unlike Friends. <laughs> this almost feels like Friends and an Adam Sandler movie from that era, like, twisted into one. <laughs> Except like an actually good one, like Happy Gilmore or Airheads. We say this, by the way, with nothing but love for Adam Sandler. <laughs> Agreed. I don't know why, but I could have sworn that I saw Richard Rucolo in some Adam Sandler movie. I might be misremembering, but... Huh. Oh, I know why. It's because it's in Boston. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yeah, What's it's in it? Boston! Finally! Yeah, so Randy, how accurate is this show to the Boston experience? Eh, yeah, pretty accurate. It feels like one of those shows you could kind of, you know, put in any real major northeastern city, which, like, 
there's only really two of those, but... <laughs> but they're not talking about Chowda. They're not talking about the Red Sox. But are they going to see the Sox? Are they going to Fenway to see the Sox? You gotta take the green line. You gotta go through Pack Street. You gotta listen to the screech and oh my god. That was more New York, sorry. One quick major inaccuracy to Boston life. How come there's not a Dunkin' Donuts on every set? <laughs> Everyone knows that every room in Boston, in just the greater New England area... My bedroom has a Dunkin' Donuts in it. The living room has a Dunkin' Donuts in it. And I live in Rhode Island. That's the minimum amount of Dunkin' Donuts you can have in Rhode Island. In Boston, they got a Dunkin' Donuts in your room, your bathroom, your closet. Best part of my day is when I'm at Dunkin'. Think that's sad? Yes, very. Real customers know the holidays run on Dunkin'. <laughs> Go back to Starbucks. <laughs> So one thing I've noticed about this show is that it really parallels the Drew Carey show in that the humor is the same. It's kind of the same type of show in that it's just a bunch of 20, 30 somethings trying to make their way through life. And of course, the chemistry between the casts and the star power is just out of this world. Absolutely. Like, I also noticed that the show, maybe because this is a very Treehouse of Horror style episode, of course, but I noticed that it seems to love to go for a most bizarre humor possible. Like, I, one of the clips I watched was like this one where they were just getting stuff from like a basket outside their window and just somebody had to keep tossing stuff into it. <laughs> it's so bizarre and I love it. The show wasn't exactly as surreal as the Drew Carey show, but for what it's worth, it had a lot of good jokes and episodes, and we should mention, this is actually the first of three Halloween episodes. I do want to shout the other two out real quick, yes. because the second one is actually a brain swap episode where everybody minus Nathan Fillion gets their brain swapped by a mad scientist, and the main highlight of that episode is that Berg gets Sharon's brain. Berg, of course, is Ryan Reynolds' character. He gets Sharon's brain, played by Trailer Howard, now played by Ryan Reynolds. Have wrapped your head around that. I don't want to. <laughs> I took three edibles. So it's that one episode of Futurama where they keep swapping bodies over and over. <laughs> yeah, basically. But Berg has Sharon's brain, and she's trying to coax Johnny that she's still the same Sharon despite being in a guy's body, and they almost kiss... <laughs> Imagine 2016 Tumblr getting their hands on that. Oh god, yes, they would. Granted, that episode is kind of homophobic and transphobic in ways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 90s. And the last Halloween episode they did wasn't any better, but we don't have to talk about that. Although the one thing I do want to shout out is, in that episode, Suzanne Cryer's head grows out of Pete's shoulder, and it's augmented with this really cheap looking fake head puppet and as i found out on her instagram recently she kept the fake head so oh, nice. that's pretty cool oh my god she's real life gibby now <laughs> <laughs> well at least this show didn't hurt any stuntmen so huzzah <laughs> all right so I like to call this episode Two Guys, a Girl, and an Imposter because this is just a big old game of Among Us. <laughs> Go to your room. Yay, I'm in it. <laughs> Huzzah. Stop posting about Among Us. <laughs> and I should mention, by the way, this show does have a connection to a previous KRT topic because Robert Goulet was on this show a couple times. That's hey! right. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for what it's worth, those episodes were bangers, so... Hell yeah. I see so many of his records at Savers. Bless yes. no escape. <laughs> so we open in a morgue where Berg and his enemy Cayman are working in morgue rotation, and do they usually let medical students do morgue rotation? I don't know how that works. Uh... If we have any medical student listeners, let us know in the comments roast us as much as you like i don't care they'll let you do anything as long as your dad has enough money funny enough the <laughs> actor who played cayman actually was in jessica jones <laughs> oh shit yeah that's right oh my god david ogden steers was on this show oh yeah he was yeah he was in the first season of the show he was a side character named mr bauer who showed up in the pizza place and his sole gimmick in the show was that he would just recite plot lines of movies except in his point of view as if he were one of the main characters no wonder he didn't stay on i was once the favorite everyone looked up to me and then along came the new kid on the block 
Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Showing off all his fancy gadgets to all my friends. I was just a pull-string cowboy. How could I compete? <laughs> and then, okay. what do you know? I get thrown in the toy box along with Potato Head and Slinky Dog. <laughs> To infinity and beyond my ass. Aw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like three Beauty and the Beast people that are dead now. That's crazy. Also, I love that Berg is just basically pre-Deadpool. Like, you can see a lot of Wade Wilson in him. Yeah, like, I gotta say that the banter between Berg and Kamen, as short as it is, is actually really fun and witty. It is. They really play off of each other really well. Kamen, come on. It's just... Put our differences behind us, you know? Bury the hatchet. Never in a million years. In a, in a trillion million years. <laughs> hey, well, hey. Okay, suit yourself. While others are having fun, you're going to be alone in the morgue on Halloween. <laughs> Prior to making this episode, before I saw, you know, this nice little thing they handed to me here. Um, I was going to say, you know, maybe it's time to find a bit other than 9-11 jokes. Maybe it's time to find something else. That was a tragic time in history. Stop making light of it. No Boston Marathon jokes, Randy. <laughs> no, hear me out. And then, guess what this motherfucker is dressed up as? Handing it to me for free. The Empire State Building. Oh, God. <laughs> Surrounded by planes. <laughs> I know it, it was King Kong. I know <laughs> it was King Kong. I know this was made in 1998. But come on! It was a creative costume, I gotta say. It really was. Come on, man. <laughs> you know what? This may be the Berg and Pete shipper in me, but they should have done a couple's costume as the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> A joke so good, Randy didn't laugh. <laughs> Let's leave that in Halloween 2000 and no other Halloweens after that. I just realized, too, there's an arc in the last season where Pete decides to become a fireman. Oh, And this no. show ended right before 9-11. Oh, no. How the fuck would they have handled that had this show gone on another season? Uh, well, I mean, he was Boston, wasn't he? Boston FD? So okay, he's in Boston, so it's not his problem. <laughs> <laughs> also, seeing Cayman and Psycho Berg in the same room, I just said aloud, wow, Wayne Zielinski's personality was cut in half, and it's these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Peter Scolari didn't do a bit part on this show. Right? He would have been perfect. Yeah. Rest in peace, King. King. We love him. Also, they play the X-Files theme song, Cuz 90s. The 90s! We love the 90s. And to really hammer it in, so, the theme song, could it be any more of a Blister in the Sun knockoff? Like, what year did Blister in the Sun come out again? 1983. Okay, yeah, they were gonna get sued like crazy. Like, that's not even trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's, uh, let's tackle the Fox lawyers before we go for the smaller ones. You know, I will say, the lack of laugh track when Psycho Berg is killing Cayman actually kind of made this a bit unsettling. <laughs> Yeah, very funny with the rubber blade. <laughs> wow. Yeah, how'd you do that fake blood? And how come it hurts? Most of this episode felt like a two guys, a girl, and a pizza place creepypasta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Then Berg looked at the camera with hyper realistic eyes. <laughs> He dead ass had hyper realistic blood on him. And since he was just a real guy, yeah, you could say he had hyper realistic eyes. <laughs> Guys, did you happen to see that picture of Jamie Kennedy in the background of that one scene in Pete and Berg's apartment? No. I don't know what was up with that, especially since it was behind Trailer Howard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, but a uh, flush of Berg with like red bloody eyes just kind of showed up in my room. Ah, sweet. I also got to say that the lighting in that scene also made it doubly creepy. 
<laughs> it really did. It's minimal lighting, but for what it's worth, it gets the job done great, I gotta say. Yes. So then we cut to the Halloween party in Pete's apartment, and I know we were talking about Pete's Empire State Building costume earlier, but I know, obvious 9-11 joke, but at the same time, that costume looked very phallic. <laughs> Phallic symbol, phallic symbol. <laughs> School's really changed since I was a kid. That costume was only socially acceptable for another three years. Oh, man. And speaking of socially acceptable costumes, did you see the cultural appropriation in the backgrounds? The 90s! There was someone in a Native American costume and oh. someone... In a kimono and Japanese headband, so... Oh, 90s, bad. Thanks, 90s. The 90s. Racism, homophobia, transphobia, cultural appropriation. How is 2022 somehow worse? Also, Johnny carries Sharon in dressed as a mermaid, and I was like, she looks so much like Madison, I was half expecting Johnny to be dressed as Tom Hanks at first. They have this whole argument about how she wanted him to dress up like a fisherman, but instead he wanted to dress up as a cowboy. I want to be a cowboy, baby. Obligatory Vine reference. The cowboy costume in question is just him in a t-shirt and a stenson, and that's literally it. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta go low budget. I mean, I get that Nathan Fillion literally dies the moment he comes on screen, but at least put a little more effort into it or something. <laughs> the way his cowboy hat was positioned, I was thinking, oh great, jean jacket's getting him. Wait a minute, t-shirt, jeans, cowboy hat, stereotype from Texas, he's dressed as Hank Hill! <laughs> Another Fox reference. What they needed was for Bird to dress as Dr. Horrible and, and Johnny to dress as Captain Hammer. There we go. But then in a couple of years, Johnny's going to say something about how he can't wait to work with Psycho Berg again. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I'm also going to go on record saying I'm probably not going to make any Firefly jokes because I liked Firefly when it was called Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Firefly, so I have no opinion on it whatsoever. P.S. Fuck Joss Whedon. I don't know what the fuck Firefly is, but I know a lot of people are mad about what happened to it. Also, because it's time for simping, um, Sharon in that mermaid outfit. <laughs> Sharon in general, even if her character is a piece of shit. Yes! <laughs> like, I can go on a whole tangent about how her and Johnny are just so horrible of a couple they make Ross and Rachel look healthy. Oh boy. Whoa, shit. But that's another rant for another time, sometime in the near future, maybe four or five years from now, wink wink. Yay! Also, you can't tell the difference between animal and human blood, you western imbecile. Words to live by. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, when yeah, when when he when 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 Berg yells at Johnny for calling him a butcher, I was expecting him to say, "Butcher, but that's our word." <laughs> butcher, I hardly know her. But um also Suzanne Cryer's turned on by Berg's psycho antics. Why not? Also based on what I know about Berg, I was half expecting this really was going to be him the whole time and like the whole <laughs> evil twin thing was just going to be oh it's going to predict us 2019 and that he was the evil twin all along. <laughs> oh don't be so shocked. Two guys a girl in a sunken place. <laughs> Go to your room. Worth it. Also, I swear to God, that old lady, I thought her name was Mrs. Hembo Twat at first. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That's my name. What the hell? Yeah, we're jumping ahead, but when it gets to the scene with the cop where Pete mistakes him for one of Berg's pranks, like, good God. <laughs> Just fuck snitches, man. I miss pre-9-11 TV where we were allowed to make fun of cops. Oh, God, yeah. We still are. I don't care what anybody says. Post-2020, we are. Huzzah. We finally got that right back. <laughs> also, the cop makes a prison rape joke because, ha-ha, 90s, that's apparently a justifiable punishment for insulting a cop. Ha-ha-ha, fuck you, 90s. <laughs> Uh, also, I have a feeling this is only one of many times these characters should probably be arrested. <laughs> I will say that when Mrs. Himmelfarb died, 
That was very satisfying. Fuck that snitch. Fuck yeah. Snitches get (laughs) stitches. (laughs) Yeah. Also, when Suzanne Cryer entered, I was just like, she just got back from George Costanza finding out she's a shoplifter. Tell me uh, about the free facial. Okay, well, like I said, I was on 3rd Avenue and I stopped by a large department store. Which one? Bloomingdale's. Very good. Go on. And, oh, I stole a Piaget watch. What's that? And then I was on such a high that I went upstairs to the salon on the fifth floor and got a massage and a facial and skipped out on the bill. (laughs) Shoplifting. Yada yada reference for the win. I love that there's a running gag in the episode that Pete badly wants to prank Bird, but also at the point where he was talking about how they pulled a shrinking prank on him, I was like, how did they pull that off? A wizard did it. That's always been my (laughs) go-to. Also, I'm just going to say it. Ryan Reynolds would make an amazing horror movie villain based on his performance. He really would. Oh my god. Like, he's not just chewing the scenery. He's making a five-course meal out of it. He's having way too much fun with it. He gets some really great one-liners in this episode, too. My personal favorite is when Cayman's like, Berg, you scared me half to death. <laughs> and then Berg's like, let me take care of the other half. <laughs> There's so many puns in this episode, and they're beautifully <laughs> terrible. Ryan Reynolds as a horror movie villain when, and I am not just saying that because I'm thirsty. <laughs> you know what? I just need to say this. My perfect fan casting for a mask movie, had they gone the horror route, would be Ryan Reynolds as the mask, obviously. Yeah. And Trailer Howard as Kathy. <gasps> so she yes. can actually be in a good mask movie. Oh my god, yes. Way to drop the ball, New Line. I know, right? Also, there's a running gag where Sharon can't move around in her mermaid tail, but then suddenly later on she's able to move around. It did it was really funny seeing her scuttling though. <laughs> because, be, because, is one thing I should excuse me for a moment. Right, the time was had by all. Alice. I'm pooped. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we should. Good Lord, what is happening in there? Also, when Sharon said he blew me off because of one little fight, I was like, Johnny got scared and said, "You're moving with your auntie to Bel Air." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that it follows with her saying he can rot in hell. And then Berg quips that he's probably in a dumpster behind the Dairy Queen. And I love that no one suspects anything from it. Well, I mean, that's just my house. That's just Boston in general. Yeah, you move from the Chicago dumpster and move to a dumpster behind the Dairy Queen. That's what I like about Texas. No, see, because you're from Rhode Island, it's got to be a Dunkin' Donuts dumpster, because <laughs> dumpster donuts. Technically, if you want to go exclusively Rhode Island, you'd have to do a Dell's Frozen Lemonade dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> so Pete ends up finding Berg all tied up, and so then it turns out, it's an imposter. Dun, dun, dun. I told you it's among us. Bum, bum. I've never played that game, so I know jack shit. I've played it. It's fun. You should. It's free on the App Store. Also, I love that Berg's whole plan was just a tiny plastic spider for his prank. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it is effective because it does end up scaring him later, but... There's a spider. Oh, spider. Deep in my soul. Soul. I don't know. And it tracks because Richard Rucolo was on Always Sunny at one point. Nice. Man, speaking of people we were thirsty for, you know... That's Spider Stomping Queen. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> oh, man. Also, I was trying to think which Always Sunny character each of them represent. I think that Pete definitely gives Dennis. I think that Bird definitely gives Charlie. And I- Sharon definitely represents kind of a mixture between Dee and Mac. I mean, you know, after this episode, I can kind of see Ryan Reynolds playing a Dennis Reynolds type better just because he's just smarmy and over the top when he wants to be. Yes. Speaking of good mask fan casts, where's Glenn Howerton as the mask, you cowards? Yes! Oh my god, that would kill. I think we need another attempt at a sitcom where the characters are irredeemable assholes with Ryan Reynolds and Danny DeVito. (gasps) Oh god, yes. We need to pair them up. We need to make them absolute irredeemable bastards. (laughs) 
Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> so then it cuts to Sharon being in the room, and then she finds out about Psycho Perg, and I love how she's all, Wow! Pete, that's a really good impression of Berg! <laughs> now, now do me, do me! <laughs> Sharon! Ah, <laughs> oh, you dumb bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, too, because this is the scene where Suzanne Cryer gets murdered. She comes in, she's like, Sharon, there's something I've got to tell you about Berg. What? He's gonna make a lousy doctor. <laughs> And then she falls with the axe in her back. <laughs> also, before that, when she's like, oh, yeah, Berg was just taking care of Mrs. Himmelfarb. And then he comes in smiling with the axe. And he's followed by a dog carrying a severed hand. That got me so good. I was like, <laughs> also, that doggy's a good doggy. Yeah, he's a dog. <laughs> also, they make some joke about Berg wanting to make a Bloody Mary and also a Bloody Sharon, which, fun fact, Bloody Sharon was the name of my Black Sabbath tribute band. <laughs> Bloody Karen is the name of my Rage Against the Machine cover band. <laughs> and Bloody Marys are gross. Why does anyone drink them? People actually drink those in real life. It's ketchup. It's ketchup and hand sanitizer with a stick of celery in it. That's what you're drinking. Oh, God, guys. I think we accidentally said it three times and I'm near a mirror. Help! <laughs> oh, no, she's cool. She's cool. Hooray! She's cool. made up. <laughs> I didn't say it three times, but now the severed head of Richard Rucola is outside my window. Not sure what that's about, but okay. <laughs> Did you know that if you say Ryan Reynolds in a mirror three times, a green fox comes out and gives you a data plan that's affordable but also pretty shitty? <laughs> also, I love that Pete's prank was gonna involve just a giant thing of cornflakes. <laughs> I mean, it was an elaborate plan. Shout out to Mint Mobile, by the way. My phone bill's coming up this week. I think all this free promotion means you should give me a break on that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Verizon. <laughs> We hate Verizon. Yes, we do. Fuck Verizon. All my homies hate Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> Mint Mobile is mid. Mid Mobile. Uh, they they should have called it that. Honest marketing. We love that. Also, one more thing I need to mention about Pete's Empire State Building costume is the irony in that is that the episode after this, he sleeps with Suzanne Cryer's sister who apparently gets him a job at, like, a high-quality architect firm, and he gets fired, and he says, eh, fuck it, I don't want to be an architect anymore. <laughs> Yay, character development, I guess. I don't know. Yay. So, when Pete and Berg were trying to hide from Psycho Berg, and they're on the floor, they were totally cuddling, right? Yes, yes, they were. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta snuggle with the homies. <laughs> That's another thing I've noticed about this show, is that the promotional material, even when it becomes an ensemble sitcom where everybody has their respective partners, relies entirely on the titular characters being all touchy-feely and sensual with each other. Yes. That's kind of progressive. And they never get together with each other. This show could have been a good footmark for Polly Rep, and it screwed the pooch. Go figure. Because 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Nineties. You had really good music, at least. Do, 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 do. <laughs> also, when Sharon started hitting everybody with the rolling pin, I was just like, <laughs> me next, me next. <laughs> God, oh God. <laughs> also, how did they fall for Psycho Berg basically tricking them into thinking he was regular yeah. Berg? Like, you guys knew. I will say that they really get the horror movie tropes down because they decide which person is going to go out and attack Psycho Berg. And the person they send out is the person that's being replicated. Yeah! <laughs> You idiots. You fucking idiots. Oh my god. That's the rules of a <laughs> horror movie. You're supposed to make all the worst decisions. How else is anyone gonna die? Also, when that cop showed up, I was just like, don't worry, he's murdered way more people than Psycho Berg. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. I'm here to write things on paper and say you're overreacting. Okay, bye. Well, at least he died a slow and painful death. And before his retirement, too. Huzzah! <laughs> I also, I love the line, It's Waffle Iron, you maniac! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because they test Psycho Berg by going back to a previous exchange where they figure out what kitchen appliances they'd be. And then the way Pete finds out that he killed the wrong Berg was when he realizes that he was Waffle Iron. Yeah. Sure, why not? And also, we gotta get into the plot twist, because... Okay, so, Trailer Howard dies, she gets shoved into the pizza oven, it's very sad and depressing, I gotta admit. Yeah. And then we get a pretty good fight sequence between Psycho Berg and Pete, and this is the moment where we find out who Psycho Berg really is, and brace yourselves, guys, it's none other than Hugh Jackman himself. Holy <gasps> shit. They got him. They managed to finally <laughs> get him. Good for them. <laughs> Holy hell. Wow. I can't believe it. It was Hugh Jackman this whole time. Man, almost 20 something years before Deadpool 3. And then he literally looked at the other Ryan Reynolds and he was like, hi, Ryan Reynolds. I'm Hugh Jackman. I'm going to be in Deadpool 3 in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1998 oh, and nobody knows who Deadpool is yet nor do you even know that you're going to be in movies about him but <laughs> <laughs> I just re- remember that the first X-Men movie released during the run of Two Guys a Girl in a Pizza Place so holy yeah. crap it was all Okay so Hugh Jackman was in X-Men with Alan Cumming Alan Cumming was in Son of the Mask with Trailer Howard Trailer Howard was in Monk Alfred Molina was on an episode of Monk and almost played Monk at one point it's all connected man Yes Spider-Man! <laughs> Don't forget Spider-Man! So we should mention, it's not really Hugh Jackman. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's Mimi from the Drew Carey Show. <laughs> Synergy! Sure, why not? <laughs> she says she wanted her own show, and it's such a perfect Mimi move. <laughs> Watch no. ABC! Watch ABC! Please watch ABC! <laughs> so, if she wanted her own show... Why didn't she just kill Drew? Uh, look a monkey! She had to go through this elaborate ruse where she had to learn literally everything about these four people from Boston. Perfectly emulates a guy's mannerisms, dresses like him perfectly, somehow shrinks down to his body type, and... Yeah, you know, maybe I am thinking too much about this. Maybe I should take a nap. (laughs) Nah, that makes too much sense. Also, I love the next week on Two Guys, A Girl, and a Pizza Place. Oh yeah, and it's just dead silence. That's the part where I was like, yeah, this is a creepypasta. Because I swear (laughs) there was like some Five Nights at Freddy's ass background noise too. (laughs) Oh man. I wonder if anybody watching that thought this was legitimately the series finale. (laughs) (laughs) Someone needs to like put this on on a degraded VHS tape and let me put everywhere at the end of time music over it. The first person to ever write a creepypasta was probably watching this and thought, hey, I could make something out of this. (laughs) We got a million dollar idea here, boys. Also, I just realized too, it's been two years since we initially said we were going to talk about the Drew Carey show, and we never did. Oh my god, yeah. We, need we to really need to. Right. Good god, that show is massively underrated. It is. It is. We love Drew uh, Carey. I thought Geppetto was okay. <laughs> god, yeah. I actually did like Geppetto as a kid. Not so much the day, but... <laughs> <laughs> I just right. like the Pleasure Island part. That's it. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Which, that was more Usher than Drew Carey, but you know. All right. So for two guys, a girl, and a pizza place, two guys, a girl, and a psycho Halloween, do we peat the tapes, put in the Share Nation box, (laughs) or burg the tapes? Kit? Definitely peat the tapes. Yeah. This show may have its flaws, but goddammit, it's a lot of fun. I love how bizarre it is and just such great chemistry from the cast. I can't wait to watch more of this show. Wink, wink. Yes. All right, Randy. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, I was on my way to go get the tape and I got covered in all this blood. Anyway, um, I'm going to give it a solid peat the tapes. This yeah. was a fun little sitcom, you know. Wait a minute, Randy. Yeah? Randy, you're Psycho Randy now? <laughs> you're acting like Psycho Randy is any different from regular Randy? <laughs> okay, fair I actually up. did get covered in blood. I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> this is just normal for me. Anyway, yeah, definitely peep the tapes. I've never really watched a ton of this before, besides, you know, what I've seen thanks to these two. No. Yay! But this is, like, just a nice, you know, fun, underrated ABC sitcom. It really 
is, yeah. There's worse ABC sitcoms out there. This is definitely one of the better ones. Huzzah. Yeah, I'm going to give it a Pete the Tapes as well, just because this show is just so much fun. And again, the chemistry with everyone on the show is just insane. And it really is a shame that the show ended as quick as it did. Which, do you know how the show ended, by the way? Oh man, how? Okay, so there, so it ended on a pregnancy cliffhanger. Huh. Not only that, but the viewers could vote for who would get pregnant. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> so there were three options. It was Pete and Suzanne Cryer's character, Ashley, Johnny and Sharon, and uh, I think Ryan Reynolds and a later character who shows up in a later season. And it ended up being Pete and Ashley, which, you know what? I'm just going to say it. No matter who won, these kids would have been screwed. So they actually filmed those three specific endings and they ended up airing them all anyway. So it was pointless. They knew the show was on its last legs. Holy shit. It really did deserve better, I gotta say. So I can't even say Good Times did it. At least Good Times followed through with their pregnancy cliffhanger. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, a series. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if if Quark didn't eat them, but yeah, I digress. (laughs) But yeah, Pete the Tapes, this is a good episode of a good show. Matt, really deserved better in my opinion. Huzzah. Okay, so you can find me on the usual spots, TylerFG on Twitter, TylerFG96 on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter at channel underscore KRT, channel KRT podcast, all one word on Instagram. We also have our Discord server and our Facebook group in the link tree in our Twitter bio. And if you want to help support us, you can also check us out on Patreon, where we have exclusive minisodes, outtakes, and episodes of this very podcast at its earliest convenience. You can find me at Cosmic Rewind, a place to eat with the three. You can also find me on YouTube by the same name. You can find me on select episodes of uh, the podcasts previously mentioned by my other two hosts. And you can also find me, please forgive my phone bill this month, Mint Mobile. I'm giving you so much free promotion. Yes, I said your service was mid, but you know what else I said it was? I said it was affordable. And that's all anyone's going to care about these days. (laughs) We just want an affordable phone plan. That being said, please forgive my affordable phone plan and don't make me pay. (laughs) We're having way too much fun with these Mint Mobile jokes, if you can't tell. We (laughs) we are. So since Randy plugged Mint Mobile, I'm going to plug Disney Plus since now they have both Deadpool and Deadpool 2 on them. And Logan, they're adding a bunch of R-rated movies, which means Deadpool 3 is going to be on there sometime in 2024. But seriously, just give us that damn two guys a girl in a pizza place reunion already. Yes, please. Also, you can find me on Mission Breakout, Twitter, and Discord. You can find me on various other podcasts. And you can find, oh my god, I have Psycho Kit, guys. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god. Wait, I- let me just take that mask off real quick. Oh, it's uh, Jamie Kennedy. No. Well, I guess you can say it's too good to be true. Da, 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 da. Ah, I love, you, guys. Oh, I love right. you too. I'm so glad you're not Jamie Kennedy. No, we are all Trailer Howard. All right. Funeral KRT, cut to thunder. Ow, oh, got hit by it. Ah. God damn it. Mother, oh God, mother, blood, blood. <laughs>